Hello everyone. Today I'd like to make a video about the Dutch defense, since it's probably the most um, used opening that I haven't covered yet. Even though in top level play, it has been out of fashion for uh, like five years already, but still some players like uh, Nakamura are, are using it. So, d4, f5, here white's main choices are c4, which is the traditional line, and uh, g3, with playing c4 later, which is totally possible, because it doesn't matter if black takes on c4, because that's okay for white. White doesn't have to be there first to take on d5. And uh, knight f3 also is probably going to be played anyway at some point. Unless if it's the stonewall dutch with this pawn formation here, uh, then white wants to maybe play knight to f4. But and to d3 from there to to put more uh, input to that e5 square and I'm not gonna go any deeper into those actually this is gonna be theoretically quite light um, black usually plays e6 or g6 to develop the bishop. g6 is the Leningrad uh, Dutch, which in my opinion gives more more aggressive results. e6 is kind of showing the cards already. So white also has other options like knight c3 and then black can play knight f6 or d5 and now bishop g5. White can also play bishop g5 already here, and White usually hopes that Black plays something like this and weakens his king side even more. Here, bishop g3, or White can just play e4 here because there's this mate threat with the queen. So but bishop g3 and if f4 then just e3 and black still can't take the bishop because of the mate threat here computer suggests something like bishop g7 a defensive move vacating the f8 square for the king but it's a little bit better for white, so uh, black is mo most likely not going to play that. This bishop can be difficult for black if he plays the Leningrad Dutch, because then um, this king side is already a little bit weakened, I guess, in my opinion. White can also play e4, the Staunton Gambit, but. Um, it's said to be like equal if uh, white plays well, so so perhaps it's it's quite risky. Also, white has the idea of h3 followed by g4, contesting this f5 pawn. But moves like knight f6 and uh, d5 have been found. To just decline this this um, uh, pawn sack here. And uh, last, I'd like to show one game called the Polish Immortal. 
between Glucksburg and Neidorf uh, from the year 1928. It shows the the possibilities of this opening for black. Um, I mean, of course, Neidorf played brilliantly, but nevertheless, it uh, stimulates the uh, imagination of what could happen here. So, c4, let's see, 3. And this is the Stonewall Dutch. It still looks quite quiet. I mean, it's a closed position. But as we know, they can suddenly just uh, explode, and you know, in any possible way. So if if uh, the other player knows how to arrange his pieces well, then uh, there can be a lot of tactics. Here, White played Knight G5. This is not uh, one of the recommendations of. Of my program, and uh, well, it threatens e6, but it seems to lose a pawn after bishop takes h2, and now if white takes the bishop, then there's check, and uh, black is just a pawn up. So that's why white played king h1. Here knight g4, protecting the bishop and uh, hitting that knight. Also note that king h1 is better than taking the bishop for two reasons. White is still threatening the e6 square and uh, also threatening to capture the bishop, I mean trap it after g3 or f4. So knight g4 was played and here white played f4. Um, it's, it's an okay move just trying to trap the bishop and maybe soon play something like knight f3. Uh, my program suggested just knight f3 here already. Uh, black has that that extra pawn still, but perhaps white could could hold on. Queen e8, bringing the queen to the game. G3. Queen h5, king g2, now threatening to win the bishop with moves like rook h1, knight f3. And here this uh, perhaps best move of the game, bishop to g1, sacrificing the bishop in order to continue the attack. And of course the immediate threat is just queen h2 followed by queen h1 knight so now white has three ways to capture king taking on g1 would lead to checkmate from h2 rook taking the bishop would lead to checkmate after queen h2 and then queen f2 checkmate. So the knight has to take. And here black drives white's king towards the center. And now this move e5 
threatening to checkmate from e4. So, um, White has a few choices here. He can take on c, uh, he can take on d5 with the idea of sacrificing the bishop in case of e4. But the, I I looked at some of those lines and it looks bad for white. His um, king ends up somewhere over here and uh, then there seems to be no, no good moves for white and uh, he's just slowly getting crushed. So what white played is d takes e5. Also f takes e5 is possible but it really doesn't make any difference. And now a forcing move, another one, check, and f4 threatening a mate from e5 with the knight and uh, also threatening to play bishop g4 which would lead to a mate in a couple of moves. So first things first we have to block knight e5 and uh, white's best shot is bishop takes g6 but here bishop takes g4 comes anyway and there's a checkmate in a few moves so let's go back let's see what white played he played e takes f4 which is reasonable but now bishop g4 and uh, now all we have to do is take away the um, g4 square from the uh, white king so which pieces could take that queen can't take it can't go here can't go here um, knight could possibly take it but it gets captured pawn could take it but then king could go back to f3 so um, but the solution is uh, maybe I should have given you time to find out I, I sure wouldn't have found it but knight e5 and then h5 now the rook is taking the f3 square so yeah I think there was a a fun game to watch. I know I didn't go very deep in any variations in the Dutch defense, but the theory isn't very deep anyway, so so it's just good to know some, some of the basic first moves for both players, and then perhaps use your imagination. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.